killed her! So who wins this ultimate small wireless microphone showdown? In terms of raw audio quality out of the box, the Rode Go, Blink 500, and the Sennheiser XSW. Depending on your budget, which one should you get? If you're an ultra low budget beginning filmmaker, choose the Sakani Tiny. If you want the best budget kit with overall sound quality, get the Blink 500. If you have a little extra money and want a solid robust system, get the Rode Wireless Go. If you want to stretch your dollar as far as you can go, get the Comica Boom XD. And yes, I will be backing this up further in this video from my original review. The Pico Mic is still the best quick deployment microphone for applications like weddings, corporate, and now dance instructors. If you had to choose between the Sennheiser XSW or the Rode Wireless Go, I'd get the Rode Go with the DoD W Loft Mic because of the system's overall flexibility. Done! Roll that intro! What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So today I have a crazy long video for you as I pit together seven different wireless lavalier mics that I have been uh, reviewing, as well as one of them being supplied by Mr. Hang562. I met him last year at NAB, and he graciously allowed me to borrow his Sennheiser XSW for this comparison. So thank you, Mr. Hang. Thank you so much. And guys, if you want to, I would highly suggest you check out his channel. He's an educator out in California, and basically everything he does on YouTube is for the benefit of his students, whether it's teaching them tutorials or getting a hold of gear to review so that he can bring it into the classroom for them to use and get used to. So if you want to join his mission in making the hood all good, I highly suggest you check out his channel, hit him up, and really support education during this crazy time we're all living through. Now before we begin, I have to really explain to you how I'm going to be testing the audio quality of all of these microphones. Because up until this point, the way that I have been testing them, I'm kind of having to go off of visually with my ear and therefore there's a lot of human error that can happen. So I'm seeking to eliminate that human error and I think I figured it out. What I've done for this test is the GH5 has a test color bar page and in that page it renders out a negative negative 12 dB test tone. So what I've done is from the GH5's headphone mic, I've plugged it into the transmitter's mic port. From there, rendering out a 12 dB test tone to stress the preamp of the transmitter. From there, I look at my Tascam DR40 to see what the signal is at, and then I simply adjust the preamp of the Tascam until it hits negative 12 dB, and therefore we've basically standardized all the systems across the board, and we can kind of see how they're going to compare with each other in terms of sound. The next thing I needed to do is I don't have a sound booth. I wish I did, but I don't. But what I can do is try to simulate it. So I took the top foam off of my Pelican case and I'm placing it pretty close to my mouth and as well as the microphone that's hanging on my shirt. So this actually deadens the sound quite a bit from the room. So there's really not a whole lot of reverb happening. So therefore we can get a better idea of what the raw quality sound out of these microphones are going to be like. Lastly, I'm going to be testing it out in a bunch of different scenarios. So we have the built-in microphone. Some of them have an included lavalier microphone. We're adding in a $20 Olympus lavalier mic that I used a long time ago, as well as the Deity W Lav um, that I reviewed last year, a little bit more expensive. And then because of Mr. Hang's generosity, I now have temporarily the Sennheiser ME2 Mark II to also test out as well. So these are all the tests that I'm gonna be putting these things through and basically we'll get a much better idea of how these actually sound. So the tests you are about to hear are just me normally talking, the noise floor, and one of you guys has actually suggested that I scream into the microphones because even if the transmitter and receiver can suppress the loud sound that's coming in, the mic capsule is probably clipping out, possibly. So you are gonna hear me screaming today. Without further ado, let's get started. What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker. What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker. What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker. What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker. What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker.
You done messed up, A.A. Ron. 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 What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! 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 What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! 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 What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! 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 What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! 
You done messed up, A.A. Ron. 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 You done messed up, eh, Ron? You done messed up, eh, Ron? You done messed up, eh, Ron? All right, so we're gonna hit the bottom line here, but before I do, I'm not gonna show you guys the distance test and the indoor obstruction test. I'm gonna leave all of that towards the end instead of placing it here. Otherwise, you're gonna be sitting here for another 20 so minutes as you watch all of those tests. But I'm gonna recap it real quick. Basically, when you're in the wide open outdoors, think like a desert where there's literally nothing around you. Well, you can basically get really good signal with clear line of sight from 200 feet to 300 feet. All of these, as long as they can see the receiver and transmitter, you're gonna be fine. Most of these systems that are using the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, and basically all of them, except for the Sakani and the Saramonic UW Mic 9, at 50 feet, the moment you turn around and lose line of sight, they're going to clip out and some of them will regain, some of them won't. So basically these systems don't do so well when it comes to line of sight being blocked. The Sakani and the Saramonic UW Mic 9, they use the 500 megahertz range. So they can actually go out a little bit further and lose line of sight and still be okay. You might actually hear a little hiss being introduced the moment you lose line of sight, but they do seem to continue transmitting just fine. The crazy one is actually the Sennheiser XSW. At 300 feet, when I turned around, it sort of clipped for a second, like it cut out, and then it picked itself back up and it stayed picked up until I turned back around. So that's kind of weird, but please do not let that be a deciding factor of, yes, you're just gonna go get the Sennheiser. Because the Sennheiser at 150 feet, the moment I turned around, it cut out hard. And then it finally picked itself up towards the latter half of me turning around. So it's inconsistent, but I thought that was kind of weird. In terms of, not weird, interesting. But in terms of the indoor obstruction test, all of them crap out approximately when I leave and go outdoors. So that's pretty much straight across the board. They all acted the same that way. And lastly, here are the battery life tests. I test these out by putting the transmitter in a completely different room, two walls away, two walls are in the way, and I have a fan blowing at it constantly. So that's constantly transmitting something. So that's how I got the battery life test there. So without further ado, let's break down everything that we can learn from this test and what are these LOVs actually doing. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the wireless lavalier kit's internal sound suppression and auto gain, however, however you want to call it. Because even though all of them are um, calibrated to the same 12 dB test tone, if we take a look at these little histogram waveforms here from Final Cut Pro X or 10, Basically, you can see that they're not the same. So in terms of the built-in microphone, the Rode Go and the Comica XD, they seem to be compressing about the same. The Blink 500 compresses a little bit lower and the Sakani just compresses the crap out of everything. When we plug in a lavalier mic, the Sennheiser, the Rode, the Comica Boom XD, the Blink 500, they all seem to be compressing about the same. Again, the Sakani compresses the living crap out of the signal. Now, the Saramonic UW Mic 9, that one doesn't have any compression at all. It's just a straight signal. And the Pico Mic, even though it doesn't have a way for me to calibrate the 12 dB, I kind of just calibrated it with my voice and getting it to approximately 12 dB on the Tascam. Technically, this puts it at a disadvantage, but actually not really based on the results we're seeing. So the next thing is we need to talk about how this compression works out when we start screaming. So when I'm screaming through this thing, of course, it's going to try to push everything down as much as it can. And you can see that again in the histogram waveform things. And basically what it comes down to is pretty much all of them clipped out. Didn't really matter which mic it was, except for the Sakani and the Sennheiser XSW. Those handled the screaming test like a champ. And I'm not exactly sure how they did it, but 
basically it seems like the microphones were able to actually handle my screaming loud voice and then something else happens within the transmitter and receiver to really smooth that out. The Pico mic, again, actually does a really good job. It's on the fly calibration is really, really good. Next, let's talk about the sound quality from all of these different mics. So we're gonna start with the Rode Go because the Rode Go is a community favorite and it still stands as one of my favorite ones as well because of what it can do and how versatile it actually is. So the Rode Go to my ears with this new standardized test has the flattest sound response that I can think of when it comes to its built-in mic and even using lavalier mics. It doesn't seem to want to color the base of my voice a whole lot, and it just sounds flat, which is good if you want to EQ um, later in post. The Blink 500 surprised me a lot because According to my ears, it sounds pretty close to the Rode Go in terms of its flat response. I think it gives a little bit more bass and mids, but not by much. Even though it sounds pretty close to the Rode Go in that regards, unfortunately, the noise floor is a little bit higher when you're going at it with the 12 dB standard, the calibration. But if you are calibrating someone's normal speaking voice and you're not doing the whole 12 dB setup, then you can probably negate that noise floor because you're calibrating to whoever's speaking and how loud they are speaking. So that is something to think about, but I was definitely surprised by the Blink 500. So the next is the Sennheiser. The Sennheiser XSW adds a lot more bass than the Rode and the Blink 500. And depending on what kind of voice you have, that might actually be pretty good for you. But for me, it definitely sounded like there was a lot more bass. Now, the interesting thing is, in terms of the noise floor on the Sennheiser, it seems to be a little bit higher. You can really hear it when you go through this 12 dB calibration. But again, I th because of how hot the signal is coming out of the Sennheiser XSW, I don't think that's necessarily gonna be a problem when you actually just calibrate it to a normal person's talking voice. It's probably gonna go further down than you think. Next up, we have the Saramonic UW Mic 9. Now, this one has the most bass sound, almost to the point where it might sound muffled, but in that regard, it does seem to have the lowest noise floor out of these wireless mics. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Din Read Filmmaker. Next, we have the Sakani Tiny. Now, the Sakani Tiny is probably the most interesting performer out of this bunch because of how much post processing goes into it. Because we calibrated it to the 12 dB standard, and then we, you know, had to jack up the gain in post, you do hear a lot of hiss coming out of this. Now, that's not actually technically true if you listen to my original review. Hey, what's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. Because if you calibrate it to the normal person's talking voice, instead of doing the negative 12 dB, the noise gate is actually gonna cut in and you're only gonna hear the person talking. There's already a compression algorithm built into it. The only time you're gonna hear that noise floor is when the person's talking. The moment they stop talking, it actually noise gates really, really hard and you don't actually hear anything. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say, um, you know, I don't want that. I want a more raw signal so I can do the compression myself, I can do the noise, canceling myself or do the noise game myself. The Sakani is definitely for the budget person who wants to get started and doesn't want to do any of that post-processing. So that's where the Sakani actually kind of does really well if you want just to kind of a set it and forget it um, setup. Now, the Pico mic actually does a very similar thing. It's got its own compression, it's got its own limiter, and it's also got its own noise gate as well. And th for this one, it still does a really, really good job. And with the firmware 2.0, I feel like it's doing a lot better in terms of getting a much uh, true natural sounding out of my voice. And I don't hear that weird crispy crunchiness that I heard from firmware 1.1 in my original review. So I will be going over that a little bit later. All right, let's address the big elephant in the room, the Comica Boom XD that I reviewed last week. A lot of you guys had commented and voiced your major concerns of why I called it a budget road go killer when it was very, very obvious that the sound quality coming out of the box did not match the roads at all. 
And 100% of that is my fault because I assumed that people understood what I meant by budget road go killer. Because if you've been on this channel for a while, I talk about budget, budget, budget all the time to the point of how far you can stretch your dollar. What I failed to do was really talk in detail about what it is you can do to get it to become a budget road go killer. And I kind of talked about it in the bottom line at the end of the video, but even then I wasn't very, very clear in terms of what I was talking about. So right now I'm gonna play you two audio clips. One is the Road Go, one is the Comica Boom XD that has been EQ'd a little bit. So I'm gonna play it a couple times and see if you can guess which one is the Comica Boom XD. What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. So there you go. With a little bit of EQ, you can get the Comica Boom to sound pretty close to the Road Go. Now, I totally get it. There are filmmakers out there that don't have time to do that EQ process, and they want something that's good out of the box right away so they can start editing. But there are other filmmakers like myself that want to stretch the dollar as far as it can possibly go. So with the Comica Boom XD coming in at $260, and you just need to do an initial EQ, save that EQ preset, and slap it onto any future projects that where you're using the Comica Boom XD, to me that's worth it, but I totally understand other people that do not have time for that in that workflow. But anyways, I just wanted to address this fact as to why I call the Comica Boom XD a budget road go killer. Now let's talk about the lavalier mics. In terms of the included lavalier mics, the Ceramonic Blink 500 really, really surprised me in this test. This test, it sounded pretty clean and it sounded pretty flat. So that's actually really good. You're getting a really good combination out of the Blink 500 kit. The next up is obviously the Sennheiser XSW. It's got the tried and true in industry workhorse of a lavalier mic, the ME2 Mark II. Of course, it sounds really good on the Sennheiser, um, but the noise floor does seem to be a little bit more bass rumbly in that hiss, but again, really sounds pretty good. The cheap Olympus lavalier mic across the board. If, if that's all you got, it doesn't sound too bad. You might need to do a little bit of noise reduction because the noise floor does seem to get more hissy when you're using that lavalier mic, but really not that bad. When we're talking about the Deity W Lav though, hands down for a hundred bucks, it does really, really good. It gives a nice good flat response of my voice and it has the noise, lowest noise floor test out of the, all the lavalier mics. Now, lastly, the Sennheiser ME Mark II lavalier mic. It really only does a good job on the Road Go as well as obviously the Sennheiser XSW. All the other systems, it seemed like it introduced a much higher noise floor as well as a digital beeping sound from radio interference. So I'm not exactly sure why that is, but generally speaking, I would say if you need a lavalier mic, the Olympus $20 one will get you by, but if you want to invest in a much more expensive one to get a better quality. The Deity W Lav does do a really good job as well as lowering the overall noise floor. So what's the bottom line here in terms of which one of these systems is what I'm gonna recommend? So let's start with the ultra low budget category. In this category, you're a beginning filmmaker, you don't have a whole lot of money, but you need a wireless audio setup somehow. In this case, I would suggest to you the Sakani Tiny. Coming in at $100, you get everything you could possibly need from the cables for a smartphone to a computer, or sorry, smartphone and a DSLR. You also get a lavalier mic, and you really don't have to do a whole lot of post-processing of your audio because when you calibrate it to your voice, not to 12 dB, but to your voice, you're gonna get a very loud signal going into your camera, and it's gonna be compressed already, the noise gate is going to be working and the limiter is going to be working. So this is really for that beginning filmmaker that's just getting started but needs a wireless lavalier kit on a completely low budget. So that's what I would re recommend to you, the Sakani Tiny. The next category is the budget out of box category. So in this category, you're still on a budget, but you want the best sound you can get without having to purchase a whole bunch of extra stuff. 
In this case, I'm gonna recommend to you the Ceramonic Blink 500. Coming in at $180 for the single channel setup, um, I don't really recommend the dual channel setup at this price point, and I'll tell you why later, but basically speaking, you get everything you need just like the Sakani. You get all the cables you need and you get a lavalier mic. But the awesome thing is, out of the box, the sound quality is very close to the Rode Go based on these tests, and the, the noise floor is just a little bit higher. But again, I stressed it at the 12 dB calibration test. So if you're calibrating it for someone that naturally speaks pretty loud or what have you, and you calibrate it based on you know your task cam or your camera, that noise floor is gonna be a little bit lower than I show in these tests, but even though the sound quality still sounds really good, even with the noise floor that we heard today. So I would say you are you know, a more experienced filmmaker, you know you wanna get a little quality and you want to do a little bit of post-production on the audio sound that you're getting, since it is a flat response, then I would say at $180, go ahead and get yourself the Blink 500. Now we're going into the budget plus category. The budget plus category is someone that does have a little bit more money to spend and they also want quality and they don't mind buying a couple extra things. In this case, that's where the road goes sits. Coming in at $200, you're gonna need to spend anywhere from $20 to $100 to get yourself a better lavalier mic if you want to wire people up. But it also does really well in terms of its battery life because it definitely beats out the Sakani and the Blink 500 in terms of its overall battery life at six hours. And we also heard that nice sound quality, the nice flat response, and the noise floor really is not that bad. So this is for definitely a more seasoned filmmaker. They're probably on their next wireless kit. They're upgrading because they don't want to use the older style um, wireless lavalier kits that uses AAA batteries or AA batteries. If that's the case and you're looking to upgrade, I would say uh, Rode Wireless Go is gonna do quite well for you. The next category is called the budget value category. And basically you are, you are an experienced filmmaker, but you're on a limited budget, so you need to stretch that budget as far as you can go. In which case I would recommend the Comica Boom XD because for $260, you're effectively getting two basically two wireless audio kits because that receiver can split them into a stereo right and stereo left. The only thing you need to do is do a little bit of more work in post, EQ it, save a preset that you like, and then go ahead and slap it onto all the other um, audio files that you got as you're editing. Of course, sometimes it might change and you need to re-EQ it a little bit, but generally speaking, you can get yourself at least to a nice starting point each time. So. Um, if, you're on, if you're on a budget and you need to maybe purchase some lights, some props, uh, catering, what have you, but you need a wireless audio kit, then I would say get yourself the Comica Boom XD. And lastly, we get into our higher budget slash specialty category. We'll start with the Sennheiser XSW because it comes in at $300 and basically you're buying the lavalier mic, which costs $130 by itself. So basically the wireless system is around $170 if you're trying to value it. Now, based on what I know and based on Mr. Hang's experience, I would actually say just go with a Rode Go because the Sennheiser XSW, when Mr. Hang took it out to trade shows and was using it, he noticed that it cut out a whole bunch. Whereas when the Rode Wireless Go was introduced, it was introduced at a trade show, and they basically dared you to walk back and forth to see if it would cut out, and it really didn't. So even though Mr. Hang was like literally really close by and it was still cutting out, that's reason for concern. And I would say, instead of spending $300, I would just say, Go, go ahead and just get yourself the Rode Go, and whether or not you want to go with the official Rode Go lavalier microphone, which is about $80, or you can get the Deity Loft mic for $100, or you can get a really cheap Olympus mic for $20, what have you. I think the Rode Go has a much better ability, and it also beats out the Sennheiser in terms of its battery life. Lastly, about the Sennheiser, is it's not necessarily user friendly because all you get is this one button and that's it. Like you can't tell how much battery life you got left and you can't um, adjust the gain at all. You just get this really hot signal. So unless you have an attenuated cable or a mixer to adjust that signal, you can't. So basically speaking, I would say for $300, you're probably better off getting the Rode Go instead. 
Next in this category is the Saramonic UW Mic 9 system. And it's basically the older traditional UHF systems where the antenna is basically sticking out. Generally speaking, with how people are using wireless audio these days, whether or not they're vlogging, they're doing just, you know, they're inside their own home studio and they just need a wireless microphone kit, what have you, it's kind of hard for me to recommend the UW Mic 9 in this climate because it comes in at $270 for a one channel system or a up to $400 for a dual channel system very similar to the Comica Boom XD, but you can tell that there's a huge size difference between the two. So really the only way I could recommend a traditional UHF system, doesn't have to be the Saramonic, but it can be any of the other ones out there, is if you are outdoors a lot, constant light of sight issues, or you just know that your shooting situation is gonna be changing all the time and you're working with clients, in which case you want something more robust. In the UHF system, the traditional ones are gonna do a much better job than these 2.4 gigahertz systems. So that being said, I would say that's your solution if that's your filming situation. Not only that, the these traditional older UHF systems uses AAA batteries, or no, AA batteries. So basically speaking, if you run out of batteries, just swap them out, you're good to go. Whereas all these other ones, you can't do that. You have to plug it in with a USB uh, power bank or something and charge it that way. And the last thing you really want to do is tell someone's like, hey, I have this really small pack, but here's a nice honking USB power bank or something. And now your pocket is a little bit bunched up and you have more wires running around than you need to. So like I said, if you know you're following a client around, you're constantly changing in terms of how your filming environment is, then a traditional UHF system might be something you should be investing in instead. Last but not least is the Pico mic. Now I love this thing with the firmware 2.0. They really um, improved the sound quality compared to firmware 1.1. So the Pico mic is really for people where you don't care that the lavalier mic is showing. So narrative filmmakers, you probably won't use it even though I'm actually using it in the most recent narrative film that I've been working on because it calls for a microphone like this. But essentially what the Pico mic is really good for is the fact that it can last up to 20 hours, which is crazy. It's also a dual channel system, just like the Saramonic UW Mic 9, as well as the Comica Boom XD, you can split the two lavalier microphones. Not only that, because it's so small, it clips on. If you're doing corporate stuff indoors, if you're doing weddings indoors, if you're doing uh, athletic training and you just want to be able to do your workout, instruct people and not have wires all over the place or having something like a road bouncing up and down on your shirt, then the Pico mic is easily the best one for these situations. But unfortunately, the Pico mic is still out of stock right now. So whenever it finally gets back in stock, if these are the kind of situations you're in, for $450 for something this small, and the fact that it's basically a dual channel system as well, you really can't go wrong with it. And hey guys, that is it. This is a super long video. If you wanna watch the distance and obstruction tests, I will leave them after this final remark. But basically, if this video has made all the influence in your purchasing decisions, I would truly appreciate it if you check on my Amazon affiliate links down below. Again, this costs nothing extra to you. It just gives me a little compensation so I can continue making videos like this for you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, so I'm using the Rode Wireless Go. We're gonna retest the distance and actually put it in the best possible situation. So I actually have the transmitter right here facing the receiver, and the receiver is perpendicular, which means it's going to have a much better range, but it doesn't matter because about 25 feet here, the turn around. I'm probably gonna cut out. So anyways, I do have some mile markers set up here and feet markers. I am at 50 feet right now. You can definitely hear me as I turn around talking because I'm going to talk the entire time. Sorry about that. So we're going to continue our way to the 100 feet mark. And again, even at 50 feet, I have to say, uh, yes, in a narrative situation, you will. And just for reference, I'm at 100 feet now. This is a 35 millimeter equivalent. So you get an idea. I'm going to turn around. Um, the reason I'm going to keep walking now, the reason I am doing this test this way is because the moment it loses signal, the receiver and the transmitter are probably doing all sorts of things to try to find each other again. So 
Again, um, this is probably more of the scenario. Someone's going to be talking at the camera. I am at 150 feet. Now I'm going to turn around here as I keep I'm going to talk, I'm talking, talking, and I'm going to keep going. Now this next feet marker is actually 100 feet in, um, in between. So I'm actually going to be at 250 feet. And again, no one's going to be filming somebody this far away unless they're using a pretty good telephoto lens, especially at a narrative situation. And I pretty much talked about in my uh, video that the road is probably better for narrative situations and you're going to want to use something different for a massive distance. So I'm at 250 feet. Now I'm going to turn around. All right. So now I'm going to make my way. Apparently I grossly overestimated or underestimated, however you want to look at it. Uh, when I originally tested all the way out here, that's well past 300 feet. This is actually about where 300 feet is approximately right here talking again I don't think anyone's going to be filming this far all right so here we are again with the whole distance test I'm gonna face you this entire time and only turn around to see if it really knocks you so here we go we got one line we got two lines we got three then we got a little bit of four basically five and a half is about 50 feet so here we are at 50 feet away I'm pretty sure you can still hear me but once I turn around and block we'll see what happens here Turn back around. You probably should hear me again. So here we go again. We're gonna go one and uh, talking talk two, talk 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 three, talk 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 four, talk 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 five and a half. So here we are at a hundred feet away, and I'm gonna turn around here, block it again. Talking talking. If you, can, I'll be very. Impressed. Anyways, turning back. Let's continue as we keep talking. One, passing two. As we go again, three. Passing again four, and here we are at five and a half. This is 150 feet away at this point. Pretty much, I'm gonna say no one's filming at 150 feet. So I'm gonna turn around, talk, 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 talk. And as I turn back around, again, I'm sure you can hear me at 150 feet, but we're gonna keep going a little bit more. Here we go, one, step, 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 and a two, step, 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 and a three, step, step. And a fourth, and a da, 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 five and a half. Here we are coming in at 200 feet now. Direct line of sight. I'm sure you can still hear me. I'm going to turn around and turn, 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 talk. And back we go. Again, this is at 200 feet. So I'm pretty sure, again, you're not filming someone this far away unless you're at a conference. In which case, I would say get yourself a UHF system. Let's continue this a little bit more. One and two and three and four. And I'm pretty much going to stop here, but this is essentially almost 250 feet away. Again, probably not going to be talking to this someone this far. Talk, 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 and we come back as we go. All right, guys. So we have the Sennheiser XSWD, and the transmitter is right here. So let's get started on the distance test. We got one, and two, and uh, three, and uh, four and uh, five and a half. So here we are at 50 feet away. Direct line of sight, turn around, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, and turning back around. Let's continue going. We have one and two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, five and a half. Here we are at 100 feet away. Direct line of sight, turning around here, testing one, two, Testing one, two, three. Continuing on, going one and a two and a three and a four and a five and a half. Here we are at 150 feet away, direct line of sight, turning around. One, two, three, testing one, two, three, and turning right back. Let's keep going. And we got one and we have two and we have three and a four and five and a half. So here we are at 200 feet away, direct line of sight, turning around here. Sorry about that. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, coming right back. There is some wind out here. Sorry about that. And one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and five and a half. So here we are at 250 feet away, direct line of sight, turning around here. One, two, three, testing one, two, three, and then we turn right back and finishing it off here as we make our way across, we will be hitting approximately 300 feet.
direct line of sight, turning around here. One, two, three, testing one, two, three. And turning right back, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. So, okay guys, so we are out and yes, it is snowing. So don't ever say I didn't do anything for you guys. Anyways, this is the Comica. I have the wind muff on because it is a little windy and the Comica is actually right here since I'm wearing a jacket. I didn't want the wires to go everywhere. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five and a half. So here we are at 50 feet away from transmission. I'm gonna turn around over here, blocking it with my body, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, coming right back and as we're gonna keep going. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and a half. So this is 100 feet away with clear line of sight. Again, I'm gonna three. As I come back, here we go again. Now remember that this is out in the wide open, so this is the hardest way for these 2.4 gigahertz systems to operate with no line of sight. So here we are at 150 feet away as I turn around. And I come back, here we go again. Because there's nothing for the radio waves to bounce off of, so that's why it can get a little hairy with how you determine everything. So here we are at 200 feet away, clear line of sight, turn around. And then I turn right back. So here we go again, continuing on. One, and two, and uh, three, and uh, four, and uh, five and a half. Here we are at 250 feet away with clear line of sight, turning around. And then we're gonna move right back, continuing on some more. One, and two, hitting three, and uh, four, and uh, five and a half. Here we are at 300 feet away, testing one, two, three with line of sight. And I continue back, let's go. Probably not gonna be recording anybody this far away, but here we are, 150 feet. I might've actually miscounted, but anyways, testing one, two, All right guys, so now we have the Pico gear, and again, I'm going to be facing the receiver the entire time and only rotating every 50 feet until I hit the 250 feet marker. This is just so that the receiver doesn't freak out the moment it loses signal as I'm walking. So turning around here, talk, 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 that's at 50 feet. So we're gonna continue going here. Now, in terms of the Pico mic, there, some people have already chimed in that they've used it on wedding systems, and I'm just, and they said they love it, which is great. I'm so happy about that. This is 100 feet now. Talk, 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 talk. Um, and the reason is because it's like I pretty much, that's the first thing I thought of when I saw something this small. Because I can't put a lav wired lavalier on it, I might be limited to where I can hide it. So it might not be that great for a narrative set. However, for weddings, I'm at 150 feet now. Talk, 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 talk. However, for wedding situations, um, again, at 150 feet, I'm looking at the camera. That might just be the distance from the very far back of the church to where the altar is. So you're probably going to be just fine. Um, in terms of which placement should you do, should you do groom, pastor, and hope to get the bride? I would say if we can hide it on the bride, that would be best because chances are you really want to hear what she has to say. We're at 250 feet now. Talk, 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 talk. Um, I'm going to just jabber. I'll continue this conversation on my walk back so you can hear what's going on. Anyways, I'm hitting about 300 feet now. About three, two, one right here. That's 300 feet. Talk, 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 talk. And as I continue, we're going to be hitting 350 feet. About five and a half of these lines is about 50 feet. One, two, three, four, and we hit about five and a half. So this is about 50 feet away from the camera. My cam uh, The pack is right here. I'm gonna turn around to see if you can still hear me, blocking it with my body. Test, test, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, here we go again. One, and two, and three, and 
four, and five. So here we are reaching 100 feet, 100 feet away. I'm going to turn around here, test, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and we're going to keep going back now. Here we are at one, and two, still talking, three, keep going, four, and then we hit five and a half, so we're about 150 feet away now, and we're using 199 megahertz is where we're at, so I'm going to turn around here, test, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, can you hear me, test, 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 and we're going to keep going. And we hit one, test, 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 and two, test, 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 and three, just gibbering, and a four, still gibbering, and a five, and gibbering again, and a half. We're at, uh, I think it's 200. Okay, so now we're going to do a second test where you're not going to see me at all. I'm going to immediately block this thing. And here we go. We're at about eight feet and about 16 feet away now this is about where the road is actually going to drop out as we hit about 24 25 so if you can still hear me great if you can't hear me in this scenario when you're outside this is where the road will usually drop around 25 feet so i'm going to keep going and we're going to hit what is this 32 now and uh, 40 some boom boom again 50 feet might be the approximate distance where you might be filming someone I highly doubt it but anyways that is a test of immediately walking away all right guys so now we are using the UHF system from Saramonic my old UW mic 9 so again I have the transmitter facing you the entire time and we are hitting 50 feet mark so I'm going to turn around and keep talking talk 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 you should be fine because this is not um, a 2.4 gigahertz signal. It is indeed a 500 megahertz signal. And I did a scan just to make sure that this frequency was the cleanest and it did. So I am now at 100 feet away from the uh, system and I turn around, talk, 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 talk. You can probably still hear me. So now I'm going to make my way even further. So the reason I'm doing this uh, test is pretty obvious. <laughs> uh, is this ultra uh, frequency going to do better? Than our 2.4 gigahertz brothers and it probably will i'm at 150 feet now as i turn around and keep talking i would be very interested to see if you can hear me you should be able to i think anyways we're going to keep going this is going to make our way to the 250 mark and um, while these systems are obviously a golden standard the obvious appeal to the 2.4 gigahertz stuff is that it's so small compared to this thing so you know but it does have its flaws in terms of distance and line of sight. So now we are at 250 feet as I turn around and keep talking, chatting, chatting, chatting. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? And as I turn back around, and now we're going to make our way towards the 300 feet mark as I go, um, as I keep going, car over, as I talk and keep going, keep going. And this puts me at approximately 300 feet away. And We'll see if you can still hear me from here. You should be able to. And I'm going to make my way towards the 400. I'm going to turn around for this one. So as I turn around here and see if you guys can still hear me. If you can, great. If you can't, indeed, as I turn back around, again, this is where the Rode Wireless Go and all the other systems where Okay, so with the Rode Wireless Go, I'm going to do the exact same walk path just to see if you can still hear me when I'm going in and out of rooms and all that other good stuff. So, here I go. I'm walking my way out of the office. I go into the adjacent room, and right now, just for reference, my body is facing towards where the camera is. I'm now going to turn around and keep talking to see if my body is going to block the signal. I'm turning back around, so if you, if I cut out just for a second, that's because my body was blocking the signal. I'm now walking out towards the living room and then to the kitchen. Again, my body was more or less facing away from the camera. So now I am facing at the camera. If you can hear me, that's because I'm facing it. I'm now gonna turn around as I go outside. So if I cut out, you know why. And here I go, I'm opening the door and I'm making my way outside. And now I am facing towards the camera, but obviously there's a brick wall and all that good stuff outside. I'm gonna walk. Walking again, testing one, two, three. I am still outside, but 
see if you guys could actually hear me or not. So here I am. In our next test, let's do the indoor obstruction test. So here we go, same walk path. I'm gonna be walking out of the office here and I'm gonna go straight into the adjacent room. I'm closing the door right now. So there is one wall blocking everything and it's probably very echoey in here. So we're going to walk out of this room. We're gonna make our way through the living room. We're gonna make our way through the kitchen. So now we have multiple solid walls in the way here. And we're just going to make our way outside right now. There's quite a bit of obstruction. And here we go, going on outside. Very nice day today. So let's see. This is approximately where the Rode Wireless Go was okay. So if you can still hear me, that's great. So I'm gonna make my way down a little bit here and continue, continue. You're not really gonna be with this much obstruction in the way. So now I'm gonna make my way back. Let's see if I cut out at any point here. And here we go, entering back into the property right now and slowly slowly okay so here we go with the indoor obstruction test making my way out of the office i'm going to do this super quickly i'm in the adjacent room my body is blocking the line of sight and then i'm turning towards the same wooden wall now i'm making my way out of that adjacent room going past the living room going past the kitchen there's now multiple walls wooden walls obstructions in the way and I'm about to make my way outside. This is usually approximately where things start to crap out. So here I am actually. All right guys, so here's the indoor distance test. I'm using the built-in microphone for this test. And I am placing the camera where it used to be just to, for consistency. I am facing the wall that's at the camera that I'm turning around in the adjacent room so that you can hear how that works. And here we go again as we make our way out into the living room, the kitchen, and just now we got multiple walls in the way. And if you can still hear me, great. I'm facing the camera now as I turn around, facing the outdoors, and here we go, going outside. Again, it is snowing, so. <laughs> and here we are. This is usually where we start hearing some problems. Um, and now I'm gonna make my way just a little bit further down to see what happens. And testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. I'm going to close the door and go into the adjacent room, closing the door. So now there is currently one wall in between us. I think you can still hear me. This is not a solid wall, just a wooden wall. So not a big deal. I'm going to now make my way to the furthest end of the property and now you got a kitchen, a living room, blocking everything, multiple walls. Um, some of these are solid, so if you can still hear me, great. And now I'm going to actually go outside of the property altogether, and you might even hear that lawnmower somewhere. So now there is brick walls that's blocking everything. I'm gonna walk a little bit outside. There's a little bit of wind, so you might hear that. So anyways, this is the most extreme filming conditions. And if you can still hear me, awesome. I'm gonna now make my- Okay, so here we go with the distance test indoors as I make my way to the adjacent rooms, closing the door behind me. So we are now one room away with one wall, just regular, you know, wood wall inside a house. And now I'm going to make my way across living room and kitchen like always. So now I have quite a few objects blocking me. And now I'm um, at the steps right before I walk outside and I'm not gonna put my coat on to rustle anything so it's freezing outside. And now we are outdoors and this is usually approximately about the part where the, pretty much all of them would blip out. So I'm gonna walk my way down a little bit here and see how far I can go. Okay, so I am going to be walking out here, same path. Now, I do have the radio frequency at its maximum, so it should be pretty darn good. I am just moving around here. Now, making my way back through the kitchen. And we're gonna, well, we might walk a little bit further than usual. Let's see, uh, 
let's see just how far we can go right now. You're probably hearing the AC kick on and everything. But anyways, there's a bunch of walls here. And now I'm gonna make my way out, see where we're at. And uh, all right, so I'm completely outside right now. Huge walls in between. And now I'm going to walk even further away to see just how much you can actually get from this system. Just gonna keep walking, keep walking. I am making my way down to the next property. And uh, I'm pretty sure you're not gonna have a video village way out this way. So I'm now almost one and a half properties away. So if you can still hear me, great. But if not, then we'll see. And now I will make my way back to see what's going on here. And uh, yeah, so that's a pretty far, pretty far distance to go. But other than that, I think it should be fine. And now I'm making my way back to my property here and see what's actually 